What I was wondering is about this word opportunity. So people may understand, for instance, um, if I'm anxious about getting a job, then I could see that anxiety before the interview maybe as opportunity or other, other um, states of nervousness that seem directly tied to an actual goal. It seems like people sometimes are more willing to have willingness to have that experience and see that as I need to get through this moment in order to achieve that goal. But uh, sometimes I hear less willingness or less, um, um, yeah, less willingness to shift an attitude into opportunity when, for instance, the thing that they're anxious about is getting out of their apartment um, or doing some everyday task that they feel everyone else is able to do easily, like going to the bathroom or getting on a train. Um, so can you say more about the opportunity and uncertainty in little moments that um, are triggered by anxiety disorders? Sure. Um, I, I don't get the distinctions that you just made about those. I think all those sound like the same thing to me in terms of what we have to face. I think, you know, let's let's back up for a minute and say, okay, so I have a goal in the short term and I've made a commitment to that goal. I'm not going to, you know, fill in the blank, eat sugar for five days. I'm not going to drink alcohol in the month of January, whatever it may be. And what happens is that that commitment falls apart in a moment. And so to maintain my commitment to whatever my goals are, I need to handle the moments. So the work I focus on is moment by moment, because that's when everything falls apart. So now back to what you're saying, if I'm trying to get out the front door to walk to the mailbox, and I'm afraid of my symptoms when I do that, I am not looking for the opportunity to get to the mailbox. I'm looking for the opportunity to provoke that uncertainty and distress, because that's specifically what I'm taking on. Specifically, I'm going after feeling uncertain, fe literally feeling anxious, and simultaneously wanting to have that feeling, not even willing to have that feeling, but wanting to have it. And I think there is a distinction even between those two words. If you, if you just hear me say it, well, I'm willing to be anxious right now versus I want to be anxious right now. You, you hear that subtle difference. And, it, and that is a, an attitude shift. Why would I want to talk like that? Well, because one is it's opposite of what the disorder needs me to be doing, which is I need to not want it. You know, if you ask a client, what, what, how does your body and mind respond to you going, oh no, here it comes, I don't want this, right? Well, we know what happens. Then, you know, epinephrine starts to get secreted in the brain, the rest of the body, because the amygdala goes, trouble, let me help you, right? So if, if that's what it's doing, then we want to do that, the opposite of that. And, and the other, I would just say neurologically, we won't get into neurology much here, I, I imagine, but you know, neurologically, I've got this neuro pathway of fear associated with this circumstance, whatever it is that I'm working on. I need to access that neuro pathway in order to modify it. So if I need to therapeutically access that neuro pathway, if I need to do that, then I want to do that. Because that's how it's going. So, you know, it's, it's like I take ownership in the work. I don't want somebody to be sitting here going, my therapist says I need to do this and therefore I'm going to do it. So I, I play a, place a lot of emphasis on the client's ownership in doing the work. I don't want anyone to comply with my requests. So if I've got that, I'm going into that circumstance, I'm walking down the sidewalk to the mailbox, whatever it may be, accessing that neuro pathway of fear. So that's good news. I've got that. Now, if I want it, if I really 
frame it up like this is I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. I wish this feeling wasn't here. You can have all those thoughts. And in this moment, I'm working. So I want to have the feeling. And now I'm beginning to lay down another track, another neuro pathway right next to, and I would say on top of this fearful reaction. So it's almost as though I'm talking to my amygdala saying, just kidding. You don't need to juice me up anymore with all that epinephrine. I want this feeling. And that's, you know, in, in a long-winded way to tell you that's what I, how I would distinguish some of the stuff that we're doing these days in, in the work I'm doing. 